Hey YouTube, Pete Turner here and I'm back again with another video. As always, I'm broadcasting this from home sweet home where I'm enjoying a beer. And about 15 minutes ago, it started to rain outside, so I thought, what better time than to shoot some content for social media? And it's sods low, because the moment I press record on the camera, I'm looking outside now, and the skies are so blue, it's making me wonder why I bothered at all. But the camera's rolling, the vehicle's moving, so we're gonna keep those wheels turning. And before we get into the content, I want to apologise for my appearance. My beer's getting unruly, my hair's got the COVID cut it's so long, I'm contemplating taking a pair of clippers and shearing it right down to a skinhead. But that's by the by. So there's three things that I want to talk about today. The first is going to be an interactive experiment where I try to transmit something into your head at home. The second thing is how to be bold in performance to create miracles whilst retaining a safety net. And the last thing is the draw for one of these little bad boys, the stack watch. I really don't want you to miss out on that. So on to the first thing in this video. As usual, if you want to play and you're sat down, sit with your feet flat on the floor. If you're stood up, all I need you to do is ignore everything else around you and listen to the sound of my voice. In the comments on the last video, somebody said, how come these experiments don't work on everybody? Well, it's simple. These will work on most of you, but because we're all influenced slightly differently, it makes it very difficult to be able to influence everyone at the same time. Some people are influenced by sound, other people are influenced by what they see, and the last set of people are influenced by touch, smell, and everything else. And of course, because we're doing this through the screen, it makes it impossible. But this is an experiment that should work on most of you. In a moment, I'm gonna go out of focus, and there's gonna be a series of songs by famous artists that go down the screen. And all I want you to do is focus on one of those songs that you know either the vocals to, the bass line, the guitar hook, any piece of the song that you know well enough to be able to either sing it or play it out inside your own head, and that's the song that I want you to focus on. So for example, if you pick Guns N' Roses' Sweet Child of Mine, which I think's in the list, you'd focus on either the guitar hook at the start, or if you're a bassist, the bass line, if you're a drummer, the drum beat, if you're a vocalist, or you just know the song, listen to the lyrics inside your own mind. Now I have chosen a range of songs from pop songs, rock songs, dance songs, songs from the 80s and everything else, so that everybody has a fair chance of thinking of a song that they know. So the songs are gonna start to go down the screen now. So I give you all ample time there to think of one of those songs that you recognize. If you feel the song that you're thinking of is too obvious, then feel free to change it to one of the other songs that are in that list. I tried to influence you one song, and I'm gonna show you how I did that right at the end of this video, but I'm interested to see if the song that you're thinking of right now is the song that I tried to put into your head. So let's see. Of course, I was thinking of Sweet Home Alabama by Leonard Skinner, and if that's the song that you were thinking of, let me know in the comments section. If you went for a different song, tell me what song it is that you went for. If you're not subscribed to this channel, click the subscribe button so that you can keep up to date on when I release new content, because the content that I'm sharing, I'm hoping is gonna make you a better creator and a better performer. Anyway, on to the main content in this video, being bold in performance. I find that sometimes on social media, on magic forums, I'm unfairly represented. And if you read a lot of commentary, it'll say, oh, I didn't try that routine, it's a little bit too ballsy for me. I don't really perform ballsy material, but what I do is allow myself breathing space in routines to incorporate miracles that if they don't come to fruition, nobody ever knows because I still get to a successful conclusion or successful outcome when it comes to the end of the routine. And that's why if you've gone through the forums, you'll have read these amazing stories where people say, oh, I fooled the pants off me because there's no way he could have done what he did. And I still to this day don't know how he did what he did. And it's because I've allowed myself opportunities to create miracles. 
I wouldn't say what I do is bold, and that's not because I'm so experienced that I look at it and go, oh, it's nothing. It's because I have one routine in mind from start to finish, and then destinations I visit in between that journey that allow me, like I say, breathing space to put bold moments in. And I'll give you an example. On a live video recently, I was asked a simple question, you know, I said, what happens when you're doing hypnosis and somebody pushes their hand into the table and you tell them it's going to stick, but then when you say you can't lift your hand, they lift it up? Well, a hand stick's a fairly bold routine as it is, and that's probably bolder than anything else that I've created or released. But the way that I'd approach that is I think to myself, okay, I don't want somebody to lift their hand up. If they do lift their hand up, what's the routine? What's the effect? So imagine taking, say, a name divination, and if you don't know what a name divination is, a name divination is essentially where you ask somebody to think of a name and then you reveal the name that they're thinking of. It's nice and simple. But imagine that you did this during a close-up performance and you kept saying to them, you know, I'm really struggling with a name, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this. And during another routine, not the name divination, you wrote down, say, the name Steve. And you put that into an empty wallet inside your pocket, but nobody knows you're putting it in there. It's just you putting something away or getting rid of it in a moment that doesn't matter. And now let's say you wanted to move into your hand stick routine. What you can do is you can pull the wallet out and you can say, I'm so confident in my ability to be able to stick your hand down that I'm willing to bet the content of this wallet on the outcome. Now you turn back to the person who you're doing the name divination on, you put the wallet on the table. You say, I want you to put your hand round it. And what you're going to notice is that your hand starts to become heavy. It feels like it's starting to stick to the table. And as you're thinking about it, the wallet becomes heavier and heavier and heavier. And it's almost like somebody's put super glue under each one of your fingers to the point that it starts to feel like it's sticking. Give me a nod when you feel it starting to get tighter and heavier. When they nod now, you know that they're starting to feel it. If they never nod, you know this is not going to work. But what I do is I go, and from here to here becomes irrelevant, and it becomes heavier and heavier and heavier. And give me a nod when you feel that, and then they'll smile, and you smile at them and nod right about there, right? And then you say, when you know your hand's stuck solidly to the table, give me a clear yes. And just wait for them to say yes. If they don't say yes, you know that they're going to be able to lift it. But here's the beautiful thing. If their hand sticks, Incredible, there's your routine. You take the wallet, you put it in your pocket and you say, in that moment where I had control over your entire mind and body, I also crawled inside your head and I got this name and then you reveal it. But let's say for whatever reason, they pick up the wallet and you say, you know, uh, I'm a man of my word or if you're uh, you know, female, I'm a woman of my word or a person of my word. So you get to have the content of the wallet. But before we go any further, you know, you beat me on all accounts. What was the name that you were thinking of? And then they go, Steve, and you say, yeah, I'd have never got that in a million years. Open the wallet and you can have what's inside it. And they open it and then they pull out this folded piece of paper and you say, oh, open it and show everybody what it says. And it says, the name you're thinking of is Steve. Now the routine's got a big bang on the end of it and it always seems like that were the end of the routine. Remember, your audience don't necessarily know where a routine's going. So if I'm at the start of an any card at any number, I tend to start it by saying to somebody, you know, if I just said six of clubs and asked you to shuffle the cards, please shuffle them, mix them up. If the six of clubs were at 23, would that be impressive? And of course they're gonna say yes. And do you know what, this happens, it happens quite frequently that that card ends up being there. It's just chance, just luck. But the more you perform it, the more that chance has got, you know, that chance is gonna happen. So they're shuffling the cards, they deal them face up. Let's say it's at 21 or 24, you just smile and say true perfection has to be imperfect and just leave it at that, right? If it's at 23, absolute miracle and you take a step back and you go, you know what? I, I told you I can do this time and time again, no matter what card you pick. And then you can move into another version of any card, any number. But let's say it doesn't hit. When you get to 23, you say, I told you, it's not just luck. There's no way that somebody can name a card and name a number and expect that card to be at that number. But that's what me and you are gonna to attempt to do. Together, we're gonna to see if we can defy the odds. And this is a case of right place at the right time. And now when you roll into your any card, any number routine, that whole bit at the beginning is just proof in concept that this is not just luck. So you see there, I've taken the opportunity to give myself a chance at being bold. Now, bold performance doesn't mean that you're just guessing random things and hoping that they hit. But psychics are a brilliant, brilliant example of how to be bold in performance. They go out on stage with nothing in their pockets and they'll say, okay, I'm getting uh, a man with the initial J from over here. Who is that? And they'll just start to say what they're feeling. And half the time, and I know psychics, I know a couple of psychics that openly admit that they use similar techniques to what I use in other mentalists. So 
the honesty is that, you know, in those scenarios, they're being bold, but 98% of the audience leave those shows. I call them shows. They're not really. They're more messages from beyond the veil, but I'll call them shows. They leave and they'll swear blind that what was shared were real and true and they must be psychic. And it's a testament to the strength of just saying what you feel sometimes in performance. And if you're reading somebody, instead of just going, oh, this is the name Steve, which I know we used in the example a moment ago, but instead of just saying that, well, what do you know about that person? Well, you know that this is somebody that they've known, they know for a while, it's somebody that they've known enough to be able to think of that person. So you could say, okay, this is a fairly, I feel this is a fairly close person uh, to you and it's not somebody that's a distant person. You didn't just pick somebody at random. So you can get one hit there. You could then, you know, focus on, on the sex of the person and divine the gender. Now I know that this is a bit of a, a controversial subject at this moment in time. So if you don't feel comfortable doing that or you're sat with an audience that doesn't feel comfortable with that sort of stuff, then don't do it. Use your intuition. Don't ever offend anybody. You know, divine that. Then start to describe this person. Say this person's taller than you. You know, you could say the person's taller. If this is somebody that you're performing on that is short, you know the person's going to be taller. Start to describe the person. If you wanted at that point, you could almost play a, a reverse elimination process. You say, this person's not got dark hair, have they? And if they say, yeah, you go, good, I thought so. And if they say no, you can say, I didn't think so, but there's somebody else that's also on your mind. Get rid of that person for a second and just focus on the one. But describe this person to me. And now, you know, you change the variables of the performance. But if you can hit details about the person, the name's just a cherry on top of the cake when it comes to revealing the name. Sometimes just looking at somebody and saying to them, who's Sarah, for example, and, and name a name that's quite a common name that we all know, somebody that we're all going to know, somebody called Sarah, or we're all going to know somebody called David or John, and look at them and say, who's, you know, who's Sarah? And what's going to happen is sometimes, incredibly, there's going to be a moment where that person says, how did you know I was thinking of that person? And they'll give it a relevance a lot of the time. And being bold pays off because of that. Because if somebody's really and truly enjoying a performance, they're going to want to connect with what it is that you're saying. If they don't care, they're not. So I guess, you know, being bold is about making your spectators or your participants care about what it is that you're doing enough to want to invest themselves emotionally in finding the answers to the things that you're throwing out. And if you do in the middle of a name divination, just like that, you're throwing out, well, you've still got the name that you've got earlier on from reading the spectator or reading the participant. And again, I'm not giving away any methods here. This is not an exposure video. It's not me sharing techniques, but let's say you've got the name, you've used whatever technique to get that name. By throwing out a secondary name, it doesn't matter if it's right or it's wrong. If you miss, you just go, okay, I don't know why that name's coming into my head. Really clear your thoughts, because there's a series of different thoughts I'm getting. Maybe they're coming from people here. Another line that you can use is a typical classic line that psychics use that's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant line, and it's this. If I'm talking to somebody over here, and this applies to you, let me know that it applies to you, because what's happening is your thoughts are becoming intertwined with theirs, and as everybody's thinking of things, I'm getting a load of different thoughts inside my head. What a perfect excuse to be talking about John here, and then this lady over here goes, that applies to me, I know John. You know, so you're opening up moments in performance but safety net yourself in the middle of a regular performance whether it's a playing card divination let's say that you've asked somebody to pick a playing card and they've picked one out and they're looking at it you know imagine saying to them let's say that it's the seven of clubs and you have the queen of hearts in your top pocket and imagine saying if it's if this is a, a woman chances are that it's going to be the queen of hearts i found that if you said to the person just so i could see how you think do you have a favorite playing card What's your favourite playing card? And if they say the Queen of Hearts, you go, do you know, it's really strange. I took one card out of the deck and I put it in my pocket. As soon as I met you, I, I got a feeling. Take it out, throw it on the table, get your reaction. If they say Jack of Spades, you say, okay, Jack, can you just say Jack of Spades one more time for me? I think now I'm starting to get inside your head. Focus on whatever card it is you picked. Look, I'm opening up that moment in performance for something incredible to happen. And look up Barnum statements. Because Barnum statements are a great way of seemingly throwing out something specific that's ambiguous enough for most people to grab onto it and accept it as something that's, that's meaningful. So I wanted this to be a fairly short video about being bold, because being bold doesn't have to be bold if you're doing it right. Find a regular routine that you're comfortable with. 
don't be so tightly scripted that you can't move off script. It's, it could be as simple as saying to somebody with an invisible deck, imagine using an invisible deck and putting it on the table and saying to them, think of a playing card or trying a psychological force. And if the psychological force hits, incredible. And you say, but you know what's interesting? Let's say that the seven of hearts force hits. You say, that's incredible, but that's not the first card you thought of, is it? What were the random card you thought of first of all? And if they say, I didn't think of one, you say, okay, well, if you were to name a random one right now, what would it be? And then they say, Jack of Spades, you go through your invisible deck and turn it around. If your psychological force of the playing card misses, you have your safety net of the invisible deck. You know, all I'm saying to you is that the best line that a mentalist can ever use is this. That tells me everything that I need to know about you. So guys at home, think of any single word in the world. Is it the word tree? No? What word is it? That tells me everything that I need to know about you. I think this is going to be perfect. It doesn't seem like anything's happened. It just seems like it's a natural moment in performance. And I've given myself five seconds. And you know what? The one time that somebody thinks of the word tree or the word cup or glass, man, you've got a miracle on your hands that nobody can explain. So the rule is this. Open yourself up to opportunities. Open yourself windows of breathing space in your own performances to nail miracles. And I promise you, it's very burglassy, but people start to talk. And once the wheels start turning and the vehicle's moving, there's no stopping it. It'll be like a freight train with no brakes. So on to the uh, draw of the stack watch. So I'm gonna be doing this draw on Friday and it's gonna be 6 p.m. UK time. So if you don't know what time it is in the UK right now, jump on Google, check it out. Work out the difference between UK time and your own time and then tune in at 6pm. What I'll be doing is writing all the names down and there was a hell of a lot and I'll be picking one out of a hat and I'll be doing the draw live. I'll also do another interactive experiment, maybe something related to time. I do not know. I don't know what that experiment's going to be yet. I haven't decided. But yeah, so we're going to do the draw Friday, 6 o'clock. Don't miss it. If you're not following me on Instagram, my Instagram handle is underscore Peter underscore Turner. That'll be on the screen somewhere down here. Add me on Instagram. Keep up to date with my stories on Instagram because I'm always messing about or doing something. Anyway, now to the bit you've been all waiting for. How I managed to get you to think of Sweet Home Alabama. Well, to find out how you got to Sweet Home Alabama in the end, we need to go right back to the beginning. I'm gonna chop up the intro video and you'll see exactly how I got you to think of what I wanted you to think of. Broadcasting is from home sweet home, sweet home, sweet home. Big wheels, keep on turning. So we're gonna keep those wheels turning. Well, the skies are so blue. And the skies are so blue. And the skies are so blue. And shearing it right down to a skinnard, skinnard, a skinnard. Until next time, guys, take care.